Hey everyone, welcome to my vlog. So for today, I'm going to talk about um, how we watched the tra movie trailers and rhetorically analyzed them. Um, I'm going to talk about G's writing that we read in class. Um, and I'm also going to talk about having my research paper peer-reviewed. I'm going to talk about how we rhetorically analyze movie trailers. Um, so I know that when I'm going to see a movie, the trailer is kind of the main thing that helps me decide if I want to go see it or not. Um, and I think it's kind of the same way for most people. So directors know this, so they definitely want to make the movie seem exciting enough in the trailer to the point where you want to go see it, but they don't want to tell you so much that you're like, okay, I know everything, I don't even really need to see the movie. Um, so I think it's really interesting how they use you know, different kinds of music and words and different shots and um, scenes and everything to make you not only make you feel a certain way, but also to let you know, kind of tell you what kind of a movie it's going to be ahead of time. So if you're seeing a horror movie, you're probably going to have, you know, like some creepy music and some like a lot of silence and then you'll have like something really loud happen. I feel like I see that in a lot of horror movie trailers um, and some sort of like scary scenes, stuff like that. Um, but then if you're seeing like a romantic comedy, you'll usually have some sort of lighthearted, fun music in the beginning and words to kind of set the scene. Um, and then you'll have funny shots from the movie to like make you want to go see it and let you know that it's supposed to be funny, but also tell you what it's about. So I think that's really cool. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about G's writings because we talked about that a lot in class and we read about it a lot outside of class. So um, the main topic of his writing was basically talking about discourse, which is a means of communication. It's like a certain type of language that you adapt. So he talked about how you have your primary discourse, which is what you kind of established from a young age. Um, and that's from just being around your family and your peers. And that's kind of just like who you are around them. And then as you get older and go out to the world, you'll that will change and develop. And so it can change you as a person or it can just change your discourse around other people. And then so what he was also saying was that your discourses, you can fall into different discourses considering what kind of or depending on what kind of a social situation you're in or who you're around. And this may like really rang true with me because I know if I'm around like my best friends, I'm going to act way different than I am if I'm around, you know, some people I don't really know, or if I'm in, like, class or something. Um, and I think that's the same thing in social situations. If you're, like, at a bar and you're just talking to some um, random people, you're not going to talk to them using big words and very formally and everything. You're going to talk to them just kind of normally or with more simple language. You're not going to try to like show off your intelligence in front of them um and so I realized that that's definitely very relevant in my life okay so lastly I'm going to talk about having my um research paper peer edited so I think that that was very helpful for me because I think a lot of times when you write something you don't like notice everything that needs to be changed to it because it's from your perspective, your point of view, but then someone will comment on it and suggest a change and you're like, oh, that's a really good idea. I never even thought of that. So I think that that definitely happened when I was reading through my comments that the person who peer reviewed mine wrote and they suggested a lot of good ideas for me. So I think that when I'm finally writing up my final paper, I think that those will be very helpful to me. So I think that that was definitely a really good experience. Um, and I think they also, they helped me like with other facts, other things I could throw in there that I kind of had wanted to do it, but I didn't know how, and they helped me figure out how. So I thought that was a really good experience for me.